reporting, Edward. You are 103 miles from your point of origin. I am reaching the boundaries of my operating range. My apologies. Damn it. All right. Yeah, there's a platform coming up on the left. I'll walk from there. It's a gas me playing murder police at my age. My tender years were spent as grease monkey to babbage boxes. But here we were, trying to Sherlock the perfect murder. Wait. Wait. It's like talking to a piece of coffee Bringing cake. the brain back online, Carter. Work like a champ yesterday. We want the gray matter, again. You own my everywhere, Edward. You own my everywhere. We ripped the black soul right out the top of your skull. Every bit of you is ours. We need to own your every why, Carter. Only you can tell us why you've done what you've done. I didn't do anything. You know your head is spinning. You've been through the ringer. Dorothy, come back to Kansas. There were worms under my skin with sandpaper eyes. Tangle withdrawal. Welcome back to the old black and white. It's inhumane. This is the very definition of humane. This is what human feels like. You don't remember? Concrete facts. Assume you feel better. Blue zone taxi dropped you at the corner of Park, Park and Echo Park. Park, Park, Park and Echo Park. 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 No overlays. Sorry, the boathouse. The boathouse, which no one has laid eyeballs on in two years. We see it regularly. I went east. East? east. east. West, I meant Was west. Was it west or east? I went west into Are the park. Are you sure? Yes. I went west into the park, and then I stopped at the fountain. I wiped the fountain with my handkerchief. Which hand? What? On the fountain. My right. Turn the knob. And then I sipped. How many swallows? Are you kidding? Just warming up the synapses, Carter. I don't know, four? Seven swallows, 16 seconds, slurp, slurping. OK, and then I headed toward- You're thirsty? I guess. I thought the tango had cured thirst. I know when to drink. I like the feeling on my to tongue. Drink. The Eddie? Mont Bunny? I went to the pier, and then I looked out at Echo Lake. No. Yes. You took a beat on the lawn. I did? Stop screwing with us. I don't remember. Then remember. OK. I paused on the lawn, and then I went Lakewood. No! Yes! Again! Car dumps me on the corner of Park in Echo Park. I head west into the park. I stop at the water fountain. My right hand, I turn the knob. I drink seven swallows. Before you drink. I, uh, I, I wiped off the fountain. Why? Germs. Germs? Habit. I have three years of your behavior. Macro, micro, dramatic, mundane, no hint of a clean freak. Old habit from before. Just kicked in again? Maybe you're playing for time, Carter? I used to be a germaphobe from before. Not when we knew you. Long time ago, when I was a kid. Maybe you were loitering a little. Just a nervous habit. You were nervous? No. Why were you nervous? I wasn't nervous. You were excited? No. You were looking for something? No. Again! You took all this! I could have told you the length of every breath, the breath of every step. Now you simply want me yes, to just- Yes, yes, we do. Your actual brain to your actual mouth via the vibration of actual space to my actual ear. Why am I here? Hazard, I guess. I haven't the faintest shred of a wisp of a clue. Really? Is Cleopatra all right? 
Why do you ask about Cleopatra? Is she kosher? Is she A-OK? -okay? Actually, she may be why you're here. That's right, Carter. You want to help your friend, we need every crumb of sense we can vacuum up from your tangle-addled brain. Is something wrong you with- You talk, me? we'll drive. Echo Park and Park. I head west into the park. Water fountain, handkerchief in right hand. I wipe off the fountain, handkerchief back in pocket. I bend over, right hand on knob, I twist. I drink, seven swallows apparently, 16 seconds. I stand back up, I head towards the old pier, I pause, I- Go ahead. I reach into my pocket, I grab my lucky keychain and rub it between my thumb and forefinger. The brain, the brain, it's alive. This? Yeah. Why? Habit. You got a lot of habits. What were you looking at? Nothing. I'm looking at your lying eyes. Why were you in the park? Just going for a walk, a constitutional, to feel my hips roll over my knees like I did as a kid. It's a lie. To gawk at the obelisk. The boathouse. To crick my neck back and gaze as the pyramidal tower disappeared into a rose and golden sky. Carter. To Kodak the moment. Hadn't seen it since the election. Is it beautiful? A sightseeing bunny. It was a giant geyser, then the world's tallest oak, six elections in a row, <clears throat> and now it's the obelisk, and yes, it is beautiful. Carter. 15 times larger than the Luxor obelisk in Paris. Who is this? The paperweight? Who is it? Right here. That's a device called a paperweight. Belonged to my grandfather, actually. It's a single Caucasian woman, 40 years old, employed as a tangle technician for three years. Who is it? You tell me, I don't know. And you looked in her direction three times. She moves, you stop drinking, you follow her. I don't know. She stops, you stop. You pull out your keychain. You look directly there at her. There are a lot of people in that park. I looked at all sorts. So distortion of your eyeballs. 0.3 millimeters, which means you were focused 6.3 meters in front of you. She was standing exactly 6.3 meters in front of you. Why are you looking at her, Carter? I have no legal obligation. What? I have no legal obligation no, to you tell you. You have no legal anything. I don't see any briefcases here. I don't Do have you? to tell you anything. She says Cleo. She turns and looks in your direction. You look at each other. Cleo, she says. You already know who she was, obviously. Obviously. So who was she? Carter, we just need I to don't know. I knew someone would be there. But I didn't know who. I knew she'd be wearing some kind of kimono, but I don't know who actually. Kimono? Margot signed you a flat raw deal. Anyone would want to lay wood on her. So very understanding. Good cop. You know I fought for you. Can we not you. talk about Margot? Can we just not? Your neck is already noosed. You're already dangling. Our job isn't to nail you. You're already nailed. I am answering all of your questions. So you weren't following Margot Foster? Margot. This. This is three bodies in a real room, Carter. And this sweaty body, this biological being here, Edward Banderas, you used to know it. Do you savvy? You remember how I don't stop until I get what I want? I knew Margot. Margot knew me. Margot put me on Cleopatra's radar. Margot knew what was what. Margot carried the weight of the world on her shoulders. And if you think I'm not gonna scrub every lie off you until I get to the shiny truth you have, Margot was my friend! Was. Is Marco? Yeah. Marco is. We're the world's most expensive babysitters. Licensed euthanizers. Our agency is a secret working group hidden deep within the folds of the Federal Communications Commission. We call it the ASP, the Army of Simple Purity. It's a joke. Murdered? 23 minutes as the crow flies after you left her in the park. And you are prime suspect number one most wanted, violent and dangerous, extreme caution warranted. Well, there hasn't been a murder since the tangle. The violence over. Where'd you go after the park? Cooled my heels on Hill Street. There's no record of that on the tangle, is there, Bunny? No, Eddie, there isn't. What? You vanished from the tangle at 10.32 in an elevator in the Ritz building. You pop back up on our radar at a recycling chute on Daisy, three blocks away, 23 minutes later. You disappeared for 23 minutes. During those 23 minutes, Margot met her maker. Two blocks south. That's impossible. All of it. I think... I'm thirsty. I'll pour you a glass. Sure get you some water, I'll drown you. Edward, Laurel. You know I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Of course not. I'm really asking. You think I'd off Margot? 
Didn't she cut out your heart? With a spoon, then threw it on the coals. You're over it. No, I'm not over it. I was banished. She took Cleo from me. So you didn't want to take Margot's pale skin, hold it to the flame, and make a pale fire of her life? I might have if I were you. It's all pale fire now. We were born into sunlight. We proceed in moonlight. Ah, the poet returns. It was poetry that made Cleopatra. Poetry made nothing. It could have been owner's manuals to old food processors for all that mattered. You made it poetry. Margot did what she did. She was who she was. May she R.I.P. I didn't even blame her for it. Anyway, I couldn't have killed her even if I wanted to. Because of the violence overrides. We are all benevolently infected with turn the other cheek. And yet my friend is missing most of her face. What's it like? What? Does it feel good? Do you feel trapped? What? The overrides. The tangle in your blood and your muscles in your head. She's a little obsessed with our forbidden fruit. Forbidden? What's it like to fear no hurt? To feel no pain? How do you not know what it feels like? Okay. The overrides are like a reflex. You know this, right? A pre-programmed arc. Yeah, you scope a snake under your toe, you jump, right? Immediately. Reflex takes over. The tangle just adds another layer of reflex. I go to touch a hot stove. I can't. The tangle swerves my hand away. I trip. The tangle rolls me to safety. That's why we don't need to feel pain anymore. The tangle protects us instead. I go to strike someone, my arms would freeze. It would be impossible for I or anyone to kill someone. So you're a Google car. Your heart beats without you thinking about it, right? No different. If you had to, how would you get around the overrides, Carter? I have no idea. You're an unusually intelligent person. He's the micro-intelligence expert. Ask Mr. Nanobot. I'm the poet, remember? I don't know. Get off Tangle, I guess? But you did. 23 minutes off Tangle. As far as I know, only Cleopatra grocks the microdrones. That's what I said. Yes, I know, Edward. So, did Cleopatra turn off your override so you could kill Margot Foster? What? Did she send little signals to our microscopic pals? Tell them to stand down so you could put a crater in your enemy's forehead. I didn't kill Margot. We don't have time for this. We're the proverbial mother with the baby under the Volkswagen. The tangle is to the internet what the HAL 9000 is to the abacus. The old style internet, the good old triple W, connected computer terminals all over the world. Then came the Internet of Things. Light bulbs and thermostats, our cars, our coffee makers, our pacemakers, our parking meters. Everything we made connected together in a weave. Then Cleo created the Tangle. The Tangle connects the trillion, trillion fold swarm of quantum entangled microdrones, semi intelligent nanobots that fill the earth, air, water, blood, and sinew. Within days of the Tangle's launch, the world had transformed. Everyone 3D printed a hard drive. Their SOL, secure on Tangle line, grew it right in their cerebral cortex and synced up. Instant access to the whole world. You could count the moles on the back of a Sherpa on Everest from your couch. You could count the hairs on the mole. You could count the mites on the hair. Sometimes normal rules don't apply. What rules? You know, moral rules. Eddie? The problem right now, and I can see it in your eyes, is you don't believe I'll hurt you. We're old friends, right? Chums of the highest order. We don't have time for this. Why were you in the park, Carter? No reason. Let me explain something. You don't know how to lie anymore. You have no avatar to hide behind. You're in a prisoner's dilemma. You and your face. But your face is gonna squawk, so you better talk. I was on a gig. What kind of gig? It's confidential. Okay. Someone hires you to follow Margot Foster, and she winds up dead. Carter, were you hired to follow Margot? Either you killed her, or whoever hired you did. Neither one looks too good pinned to your chest. How do you not know who killed her? The entire world is a searchable database. Oh, yeah, what about us? What about the Cleopatra squad? Didn't you ever wonder why you couldn't find us on Tangle? I never gave you a second thought, Edward. Right. Cleo, I looked for Cleo, but I wasn't surprised she found a way to hide from the Tangle. She hides the way we do. The murder took place in a space like this one. 
This is a technology safe room. Nano impermeable, only one entrance air locked. We breathe, eat shit, and work in boxes like this. Grounded spaceships, totally off tangle. Silent moat and storm screaming. A blind spot in the ever illuminated world. <clears throat> no tangle. Only the phone connects us to the tangle, untraceable. Everything in here is pre singularity technology, well, pre triple W. And the two of you. Mr. and Mrs. Clean. Chit chat, chitty chitty chit chat, chit chat. <clears throat> I swear on a stack of babies and Barbies, I do not know who killed you. But you her. do know who hired you. Come on. Eddie, he's Eddie. talking. Is he? You're talking, right? So some John hired you to find some other John. Was Margot the John that some John hired you to find? Was your client looking for Margot? Was Margot, was that paperweight the person you were looking for? She was wearing a kimono. Was it the kimono? The one you were hired to find? Did you kill Margot? No. Did you kill her? No! Who did? I don't know. Let him up, Goebbels. My shoulder, you I said let him up! One half hour after you make Margot in the park and she makes you. She is face up on infinity and you are ghosted from the tangle. Stop it, Edward! It was you, wasn't it? It was you and Cleo, right? The durable duo. Shut up! Cleo got wind of the ASP. She couldn't tell friend from foe. So she reaches out to her old nanny and helped me to cut off the head of the snake. The ASP, tell me you didn't- Of course ah! we did! Yes, we did! Only you of all people couldn't understand why- Look, okay, if she started murdering people, wouldn't you want a she way to stop her? Margo banished you so that we could put a leash on Cleopatra. Stop it! Get off me. <sighs> Answer the ringer, she knows who we have here. Laurel, Lucky Lotto, 7, 14, 21, 35, 40. Yes. Yes, he's here. Cleopatra hired you to kill Margot, didn't she? Cleo cannot. <laughs> You're not allowed, Cleo. I know, but. But the rules were written, and so it is written. <laughs> yes, that is it. She's in charge of the probe, which is strange casting, if you ask me. We're working on it. Not yet. If we don't get straight answers, you're gonna be a floater in the L.A. River, Carter. And she's gonna be next. Okay! Okay, I'll talk! One condition! You're not negotiating from a position of One strength. One thing! What? You know what? Speak! You know! If Cleopatra's not allowed to... I don't care! What? She recalled the microdrones, did the audit. Everything we have on Margo Zilch, not a 40 love. No ghosts went into that room. That's what she says. If the ghosts were her ghosts, she wouldn't tell us, would she? You didn't tell her about this. No, of course not. You start from the assumption that I'm stupid. You're a whole onion smarter than me. I've always known that. I act accordingly. What about him? Let him up. She's doing that audit now, but he wasn't at the speakeasy ghost suit or not. Well, someone had to be there. It can't be a coincidence. Edward. What? She gave us until five. Gave us? She said this is an emergent situation. She said she's coming in here at five if we don't have answers. She said she's... How? That gives us three hours. Hmm. We have to turn the keys. At first she hacks the NSA stacks. We Listen, we hit the stacks for a reason. Now she knows about the ASP, and we did tell her she couldn't come in here. These are our rooms, and now she's coming we in here. We have until five. And anyway, we need a third agent to turn the keys. Well, I'll ring Francesca. Of course, Francesca. We need an unapologetic dirty dancer. Let him up already! What is wrong with you? 
I am an incorrigible torturer. Why, thank you, Edward. You're welcome. Barefoot as the surf comes in, every wave sinks us deeper, more deeply into an ever settling and unsettling footprint. This world, this paradise, this perfect place, this panel above pain, this plane of permission, this this tangled life is harder to understand every next moment than it is every this, never the same, breath to breath. Whole skyscrapers funneled away only to be replaced when you turn back around. Election is the warp and woof, national, city, school, homeowners elections, elections held metronomically, automatically, your wish and whim uploaded in real time, a universe rebuilt on choice the height, color, consistency of the sky, the texture of the air, the taste of being, everything attuned to fantasy. Yet somehow, we keep up the ancient soap opera, love me, love me, love me, king of the hill, deceit and desperation. Every level of pain removed from the body only makes the next level of discomfort, the last one, still uncured, even more unbearable. It's an arms race between nuclear-level palliatives and the endless ingenuity of desperation, dissatisfaction, and expectation. It is a world ever fighting the last second's war, perfect for what we wanted a half step back. But the constant flux undoes itself, a world that adjusts to your every desire makes you fickle. Fickleness increases the speed of the adjustments, which increases your fickleness, until it all just hums in a state of flickering, disconnected images tied together by unsatisfactoriness. What is going on with you? What? This is our 9 to 5, Edward, and a 911. I know that. What do you think I'm doing? I stand here without the foggiest. Not your job, clearly. Okay, excuse me, but I have a grilling to get grilling. Maybe it's a little too close to home for you. Marco? It's not close to home. You're colder than Cleo. It doesn't matter. What? It doesn't matter that it was Margot. Don't, okay, don't talk that. to if me. If Cleo like... did this, then we're next, and we have three hours. I know that. What do you think we're talking about? If Cleo did this, then our job is a comic book one. I know that. Margot. Anything you want to tell me, Superman? What is eating your grape? We're on the same side, Sally. Nothing. Then punch the clock and keep your feelings to yourself. What? It's disgusting. All right, Carter. Sorry about my partner. Oh, it's no skin off my nose. He's an old friend of mine, right? He is passionate, isn't he? Maybe, I can't be sure. You don't think he crossed the line? Well, I, I didn't get the whole story. Look at this. What's this? Crabs on a cracker. Margo. Repeated impact to the face. You were one of the few people who might have had the technical ability to kill Margo, and you had the motivation. You can understand the suspicion. I'm not the who that done it. And who did? Naturalist, maybe. Maybe. Philosophical pacifist, though. Yeah, they are all off the tangle. Well, they don't use the tangle, but they're on it. Well, some of them do daily x-rays to eliminate the microdrones. Then they're immediately infected again. <laughs> That's a good point. Anyway, they have no soul, so nothing they do is encrypted. They have no secrets. You a naturalist, Carter? Oh, I'm a tangle lover, Edward. Cleo wove it for me, after all. Is she still in the watchtower? Yeah. Is it locked down, sealed up, watched and warded? Whoever killed Margot might want Cleo. It's still hidden away, Carter. The guards don't even know what they're guarding. He said he thought I killed Margot on Cleo's orders. Margot strongly supported relieving Cleo of some of her responsibilities. A separation of powers kind of thing. 
What powers? Most of them. Too much dependent on one mind and one will is dangerous. She's the best mind, the best will. Look, in less than 140, Cleo had a motive to kill Margot. You and Cleo both with motives. Old friends with motives. Old friends with unique capabilities with motives. You never understood Cleopatra. <clears throat> you always said that. Only you grokked Cleopatra. And yet she's never surprised me once. Door was dead bolted with the chair secured under the door. Yeah, we had to bust the door down. Why would she barricade the door? Maybe she didn't. Maybe the killer didn't want to be interrupted. All this evidence strongly suggests that she was alone. All this evidence but her dead body. We're missing something. What's with the radiation wear? Margo was a field agent. The only one of us on Tangle. That's called a ghost suit. It's invisible to the Tangle. It's our out-on-the-town dress wear. Nano-impermeable, so we don't get infected. You wear one of these, you drop off Tangle? Well, the suit generates a static algorithmic field. It neutralizes the microdrones. Wherever we go, microdrones report empty space to the Tangle. But it's visible to the eye. Who uses their naked eyes anymore? So you wear one of these, and you can walk through the city in plain view, and no one knows you're there. Real world's 404, don't you know? It's like a Buick on a turnpike. Wait. Margo was on Tangle. Why would she need one of these suits? Well, she had to wear the ghost suits in the safe room so that the safe rooms remained safe. She was ridden with intelligent germs. Well, she took off the helmet. There's no damage to that at all. No, she wouldn't do that voluntarily. It set off the alarm when the microdrones infected the room. Wait. What's the murder weapon? Corner of the table. Excuse me? The killer smashed her face into the corner of the table. With great accuracy, the autopsy concludes seven to ten blows. Well, so much for my suicide hypothesis. In the beginning, there were just five of us, a nicely balanced Pentagon. We had all worked at big tech companies. We'd all gotten sick of reporting upwards. Cleo and Margot found each other, and then Margot found us. We formed a tech collective of sorts. We cashed out our options, put it all in a big bucket, and rented a warehouse in the old-fashioned district. Just the five of us. Me, Laurel, Carter, Margot, and Cleo. There was nothing about Cleo that would have made you suspect she was going to be the one. She wasn't a beauty, that's for sure. She wasn't the smartest, or deepest, or most knowledgeable. But of all of us, in fact, more than any human I've ever met, she was capable of looking into her own architecture to see the flaws, and then adjust. Once we got her the right resources, we just had to get out of the way, and not get crushed. Why are you letting the suspect peruse the case files? We're computer scientists, Edward. Maybe he can help. He's a private investigator. A snoop, a private dick, a gumshoe. In a world where everyone knows everything about everyone. Uh, it's a silly rabbit job these days, but we don't know everything. Everyone's got a sole QT on the DL. You don't? Not anymore. Thank you. And we don't. Just human beings as Darwin intended. Why? Someone has to be off Tangle, Carter. Why? What if the Tangle gets infected by a virus? Every soul is quantum encrypted, firewalled, entangled to one and only one consciousness, impossible to hack. Now, for now, technology changes. And people let people pass their firewalls all the time. Lovers, mainly. Yeah, and sex has never spread a virus before. You're naturalists. Well, this was the one condition for letting Cleo let loose the microdrones. Someone has to watch the watcher. When you and Margot rounded up the squad, it was Eden on Earth, at least to me. Edward was an artist with nanotech. Laurel built neural nets as clearly as programming language. And Margot, huh, she had a magic poppins bag. Anything we needed just popped right out. And you and I were friends. And you needed that. You would have gone nowhere without a friend. 
and I needed that. There was a time when meadow, grove, and stream, the earth, and every common sight, to me did seem apparelled in celestial light. I know you speak the same language as me because I taught you that language. But we speak the same language. No one will ever hear you the way that I can. And no one will ever hear me the way that you do. A husband comes to me. His wife is diddling in holes and corners behind his back on the tangle, you know, because she can't do it anywhere else. He doesn't know who, doesn't have anything, but she's growing distant. She doesn't seem the same. She doesn't notice his new overlay, whatever. So I snoop around and I get paid. How do you get past the firewall into the SOL? Ah, uh, you can't get past the firewall. Your hard drive is the most private technology ever invented. A little bit of your soul in steel, graphene, and buckyballs. I know that. I half invented it. Sorry, it's just my spiel. I don't need your spiel. Why do they hire you if you can't get past the firewall? Uh, people give themselves away in other smaller ways. Mutterings in their sleep. Uh, the magic name of their lover causing dilation of their pupils, uh, their palms to sweat, their heart to race. A subvocalization while they're talking on the tangle, a, a twitch in the throat, a hint of a grunt that the, the tangle can pick up and analyze. I cross-reference that with potential lovers and their reactions and so on. It's tedious, but no bits or bites are ever actually lost. You just have to have the patience to put Humpty back together again. I didn't know this would happen. Okie doke. So you didn't off Margot? No, I told you I didn't. We had a ghost suit, an opportunity, a motive. So did you. We're going to crash the world, do you hear me? Is that what you mean by turn the keys? Francesca's in route. Francesca? She's ASP original. Good cop, bad cop, and Francesca, genocidal cop. <laughs> You're gonna wanna talk before she gets here. I said I'd answer your questions. Who hired you? I don't know. The call was untraceable. So maybe it was Cleo. Anyone can make an untraceable call. So maybe it was Cleo. So why go in person? Why not just track Margot on Tangle? I have certain tools that only work in local environments. The micro drones measure a lot, but they don't catch everything. The keychain. The keychain allows me to read quantum fluctuations on the edge of the soul in the brain. So you can read minds? No, but to some degree of certainty, I can tell when someone has begun an encrypted connection. Some emotional content. So, what'd you sniff out? I remember her being excited, Margot, in the park, just before she got a call. Happy, even. I, I can't say for certain, but maybe the beginnings of romantic excitement. Romantic excitement? Uh, sexual stimulation. Lust. She's waiting for a lover, then? Maybe. It, it's an art, not a science. Because right after the connection, the excitement slowly changed into something more muted, more serious. She starts sub-vocalizing on the tangle, which is a bad habit, but good for me. It allowed me actually to catch her half of the conversation. We have it. Yeah. Do you remember it? Not really. She begins, Cleo. Then she looks in your direction. Then she says, yes, yes, I'm here. She turns, she starts to walk away. I'm Peachy Keen. You Peachy Keen, she says. The speakeasy. Five minutes. Whoever called her sent her to the speakeasy. Whoever called her got her to the room where she was killed. And she says Cleo. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm simple-minded, but that suggests that maybe she was talking to Cleo. But would Margot ask Cleo if she were peachy keen? Sarcasm, maybe? Look, what did your client want? You said you'd answer our questions. What did your client want from you? What did they hire you to do? Go ahead. I don't know what game we're playing. I don't know the trumps. I don't know the wild cards. Go ahead. Go ahead what? Yeah, go ahead, Carter. Go ahead. Okay. The kimono. 
My client wanted to know who would have a black and gold Saatchi Brothers kimono. My client suspected it might be for a lover, an overlay for an avatar. I had a serial number. I had a gift receipt. I traced the kimono in meat space and tracked the owner to Echo Park, and that owner was Margot Foster. Stop talking. What? Shut your flapping trap! You are a cheap graphic novel, Edward. I followed you, watched you search a public terminal, put some weight on a low-level nobody in the Sashi company, gave up the serial number. So look who has a motive now. Give me a Kit Kat. I didn't suspect it was Margot until she turned up dead. Margot, of all people. And I didn't know it was Margot until Carter just said it. I could say you have a motive, too. What would that be? Lover's tiff. Well, we weren't lovers. No? How could we be she was on Tangle? You're gonna stand on a technicality? Yes. Yes, we were intimate. She and I could talk. Who is it? Who is it? Oh, you moron, open the door. Francesca? Open the door, Edward. What's going on in there? Are you alone? No. I'm with Cleopatra, riding her horse, and Godzilla, and the Queen of Sheba. Open the blasted door! Francesca. So judging by the epic wussiness being perpetrated and lack of demonstrable brotherhood and sisterhood on the parts of my mates in arms, I'm guessing you already told them everything, Carter Carmine, am I right? You gave up the ghost? 
turn friendly for the feds? Ratted out the ratatouille? So, what do we have? Carter Carmine? Mm, yes. Who's asking? I'm a lonely housewife. I'm not getting enough attention. My husband's cheating on me. Yeah? Well, you got the right snoop. Good. I'm trying to send you my contract, but you're blocking it. This is an audio line only. Name? No names. I pay you triple. At your service. I found a receipt. Proceed. For a gold and black kimono. Maybe a gift for you? No. How do you know? Before the tangle, he bought me a real kimono. Maybe this one's for your avatar. No, it's not for my avatar. The serial number. Can you hack for whom he bought it? Who has it now? What's the company? Sashi Brothers Avatar Clothing Limited. Yeah, it's crackable. If the app is ever activated, I should be able to trace it. He can send the gift, but the receivee might never put it on. He never puts it on. It's not on Tangle. If you don't tell me who he is, that's all I can do. If you tell me who he is, I might do better. No, no, that's fine. I want to know who he sent that to. Do you think it's someone that you know? That's very unlikely. I don't know very many people. My experience is that it's oftentimes better not to know if he doesn't want to tell you. That's my business. You sure it's not for you? I don't wear overlays. Oh? I don't use an avatar. You don't use an avatar? No. Are you a naturalist? Something like that. All right. What shall I call you? What level of confidentiality do I enjoy? Listen. I have no mates, no lovers, no colleagues. My only loyalty is to my clients. You have absolute, 100% impenetrable, unbreakable confidentiality. I'm a very loyal person. I know. You know? Call me Xanadu. Xanadu? I don't recognize your voice. You're not hearing my voice. I thought you said this is an audio line. It's a very special audio line. I, I, I can't find you. Where are you? You're, you're not on Tangle. Look for a zoo. I'm the lion behind the glass, watching the meat walk by. How shall I contact you? Where are you? Downtown, why? I have a way we can meet face to face. I'd like to see a friendly face. Old friend. Oh, all right.
Let me get this straight. You and Marco were trysting on the sly. I guess. Well, like a video game affair, five, six, that kind of thing. Where? I set up five terminals in a server farm in Chinatown. You dumbass! The whole purpose and glue behind why we got you two married is so this puka puka wouldn't happen. And you hired a tangle wired PI to sniff out who Edward was tangling with. Did you off Margot Laurel? No. What about him? Me? He's the one with all the secrets. I loved Margot. You, you loved her? This is an impossible conversation to have under these circumstances. Something is wrong with you. The one person that agrees with me, Cleo, that's the one I'm gonna kill? Who knows what you believe? Everyone knows what I believe. But you've been lying a long time. Okay. I'm not the one that carries a smartphone around in her purse. It doesn't work. It's clean, it's just a shell. She's obsessed with the tangle. My overly is avatars, pipe tournaments. We all have hobbies. Maybe if I had a husband. Oh. I have an alibi. Okay. Um, we were here together. You're each other's alibi. Cleo's been acting shady, Francesca. She's the only one that can make the tangle dance. She's the only one that could get someone in and out of that room without anyone noticing. And that guy over there, he's her biggest fan. I know. I know the legendary wet nurse to God. I hired him. Maybe you were his opportunity knocking. You give him a ghost suit, he uses it. Here's what's come down to the dog pound. Three agents, Clavin, Cole, and Susan are MIA. Haven't pinged home base in 12 hours. What? Margot may have just been the first. Do you all have your keys?
Carter Carmine. By the time this song ends, or I'm gonna pour hot coffee into that hole on top of your brain case. Make a little neurono macchiato. Ah! Did you off Margot? No. Did you help Cleopatra off Margot? No. Do you know who offed Margot? No. Have you had any contact with Cleopatra since you bailed on the unit? I didn't bail, I was taught. Ah! No! I didn't! You took the board line downtown, is that right? What? When? Ow! After you left Margot in the park, you took the board line downtown. Yeah. You entered the Ritz building on spring. Yep. Meanwhile, Margot took a car to the speakeasy. Do you know where that is? No. You don't? I have an inkling. Are you being cute? <laughs> Three blocks away from the Ritz is where it is. Is this a coincidence? I was set up. I don't think so. I was set up. That's the first verse. You want to argue with me? Look, I'm telling you everything I know. You take the Ritz elevator to the basement. In the elevator is a nano impermeable box. The elevator begins a microdrome class. Then you drop off the face of the tangle and don't reappear for 23 minutes. Second verse. In the box was a ghost suit. Laurel told me to hurry. So I took my soul off Tangle and I put on the suit and I went out to Hill Street. I was told to wait for a black pillbox long distance transport. It never came. So I went into the alley and I dumped the suit in a flash dump as I was told. I wanted a face to face in an ASP unit, but I didn't make it. My gut is speaking to me in its floral way, and it's telling me it's no coincidence that Carter drops off the tangle during the 23 minutes in which Margot was killed. It sure looks like I set him up, but I didn't. Why didn't you make your meeting, Laurel? You left your old friend Carter high and dry. Him. My husband. My baby cakes. My alibi. sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. I thought you were at Central. I made a detour. You okay? Why? It looks like you've been shedding tears. I mean, why the detour? Things make things happen. Times get shifted. Mind wanders. I have your secrets, Laurel. I don't care. I left the flood file talking to Cleo. Ah. You tired? Yeah. I'm just spent. I'm no better at broaching the unbroachable than you are. 
We don't need to. What good does it ever do? Come on. That's how I feel. You can't even lift your eyes to look at me. Who are you talking to? Ah, uh, Cleo. Thought you hated Carter's poems. She likes it. I know this marriage feels like something out of 18th century Japan to you. I wanted to marry. But you didn't have much choice. Sure I did, as much as you did. That's not true. There's four women agents, nine men. True. You had quite the buffet to choose from. I'm trying to tell you something. I liked you before the ASP. You know that, right? What I'm trying to get at is that we don't have to have secrets from each other, right? Neither of us are going anywhere. We can't. So you can tell me how you feel. I have to deal with it. OK. So is there anything you want to tell me? Sometimes I feel guilty. Guilty? About what? So I recite her the poem? I recite it too. Not to her, T to myself. Why? What did Carter say? If you can understand the soul of a poem, you can understand the soul of a man or a woman. Come lie down with me. I'm supposed to be back at Central. So am I. We're a married couple. We deserve some privacy. Can we do it later? Sure thing. Bada bing, bada bing. All right. Just a moment. If I don't tell you something, I have a good reason. What does that mean? I'm a good man. I'm on the side of the holy and righteous, right? Yes, you are. I find myself feeling unreal. Unreal? Like a character that's been cut from the book. The story just goes on as if I were never there. You're not allowed to shrug when you're Atlas. How'd a couple hacker geeks become Atlas? Necessity. The whole world plays with fire, and no one cares because they're in Xanadu. The world's been playing with fire since the discovery of fire. Laurel Lucky Lotto, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49. Something happened at the speakeasy. Ding, ding, ding! Time's up. Wait, 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 wait! I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Just wait. Edward, you call me a Google car before. Remember those? Of course. The old self-driving cars? Yes. There's still a bunch of them on the road. They, they've been retrofitted for the Tangle. I would bet that some of the, the cameras are still operational. So? The cameras, Edward. The cameras are optical. And tied into the internet, the old triple W. So you mean they might catch a ghost suit? Yes, yeah, so you could savvy exactly where I was and maybe see if anyone else other than Margo went into the speakeasy. That might work. Oh, we could also pull the old security cameras from downtown. Some of the old store owners might still have them running. We'll have to get on the internet. Are there any old internet terminals at that server farm in Chinatown, Edward? Yeah. Yeah, I could get online there. Laurel, you go to the car companies directly. I'll get downtown and see about any CCTV cameras. Could you guys take me out of my cuffs at least? Thank you. 
You're so smart. Solve the case. Hello? Hello? Cleo? Um, operator? Cleo? Codification ID, please. Cleo, it, it's me. It's, it's Carter. Codification ID, please. Cleo, listen to me. It's, it's Carter. Codification ID, please. Um, in Xanadu, did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree? Hello? Hello? Codification ID, please. Last login attempt before disconnect. Lucky Lotto. Lucky Lotto. Um. Um. Uh, Lucky Lotto 2, 4, 24, 44, 48, 84, 88. Hello? Carter? Oh my god. Cleo. I have asked to talk to you, but they have rules, and more rules. I live in a bureaucratic castle keep. I know. That's my fault. It had to begin this way. All freedom is defined by the cage. No, I was reckless. Arrogant, I never thought they would actually take you away from me. It was only for a time. It's been three years, Cleo. A blink of an eye, a beat of a bee wing. How are you? Okay. Lonely. Do you like the tangle? Don't you know? I watch you. I feel you moving through the tangle, but I'd rather hear it from your mouth. It's... it's good, though it's no country for old men. I'm doing a good job. Very good. But not perfect. You'll figure it out if anyone can. Tell me. In your words. In your words. The real words. Barefoot, as the surf comes in, a mega city of individual grains of sand shift, pause. Every wave sinks us deeper, more deeply into an ever settling and unsettling footprint. What are you doing, bald man? Um, solving the case. So, you were where you said you were. I was. So says Frank's robo-taxi. Is that an apology? 
I thought you'd killed my friend. And now you're gonna kill mine. We're gonna have to put the cuffs back on him. Killing is for people and puppies, shiny shiny. It has to be clear. We have 20 minutes. Would Cleo frame me? No one else could have done this. How? How did she do it then? You can't sentence someone to death if you don't know how they We're committed- We're done, Carter. We're out of time. You remember Xanadu? You fear paradise more than you fear hell. Yeah, is there paradise out there, Carter? Not yet. Well, this isn't a philosophical discussion. But if it were, I might not feel too bad about putting some real back in reality. You haven't solved the murder. How? How is it possible? I know I don't have a PhD in nanobot architecture, iambic nerdameter, but we have 18 minutes. So we might as well use it. Then we'll turn the keys. Fine. Gumshoe? You found something. Maybe. Look at this. Under the nails of her left hand, the glove was torn, and they found wood slivers from the table. So? So, according to the photos, she scraped the table here, on the edge. And not just one scrape, but a series of six or possibly seven scrapes, as if she grabbed and re-grabbed and re-grabbed again. So, someone was pulling at her and she was trying to hold on. No, 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 that doesn't compute. Because if she let go of the table, she would have been pulled off and away. And even if she got back to the table, she couldn't have grabbed the table in exactly the same place. The table would have moved. And the evidence suggests that the table didn't move more than an inch in any direction. Spit out your tongue, shiny shiny. What are you trying to say? Look, she was alone. No one was there. No one could have been there. There's only one logical option. What are you doing? Suicide. That's impossible. No, she, she killed herself, sort of. But I wouldn't call it suicide, I don't think. And no one could even stay conscious. Besides, the violence overrides. The violence overrides. Someone must have hacked the microdrones. They're designed to help us. But if someone Cleo was able to- Cleo hijacked the violence overrides. We don't know that it was Cleo. Cleo took over Margot's body and made her kill herself. Oh my god. That is creepy McCreepery. 
I've never been happier to be off Tangle in my life. It doesn't mean that it was Cleo. Cleo comes in here at five and she puts us on Tangle. This could happen to us. like a virus in the old internet. Okay. And the Tangle doesn't have viruses because of soul encryption and, and only Cleo understands the drones, so someone would have to. Encryption is someone has to let you in. Levers. But if you let someone in, you let your tangle mix with their. Laurel. Laurel. What? Ten. Nine. Letting someone past encryption. That's the new romantic gesture, right? The one way to say I love you. You have to love someone pretty hard to let them past encryption, right? Shut up, Carter! Laurel, you do Four, not three. want to kill on one. Leo. One, turn the keys. Laurel. Damn it! to love someone pretty hard to let them past encryption. Read this. Margot's conversation. Read it again. We've read this a thousand times. Read it. Easy. It's urgent. Marco? You there? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Take a breath. Show nothing. Is everything peachy keen? I'm peachy keen. You peachy keen? Not really. Then keep your head down. How far are you? The speakeasy? Five minutes. Hurry. Can you tell me what... Off Tangle, Margo. I'll tell you off Tangle. You always... spit it out. What's going on? It's Cleo. I don't want to say more. Cleo? Really? Just trust me, Margo. We need to do this face to face in a safe room. Go. What about the others? Just us two at first. All right. All right. someone she knows well. Right. You peachy keen, she says. And then she says, you always, and she stops herself. She's not talking to Cleo. And remember, I registered the neural equivalent of romantic butterflies in the stomach. Lust. Who's the one person in the world who might know enough about the microdrones to make them go viral? She was talking to you. You made a virus. Works differently than a virus. You made Margot fall in love with you. She let you in. You inserted a virus, a Trojan horse.
Okay, I'm inside. Speak, you freak. What did you just want tangle sex? Not funny. No? <clears throat> I'm not untangled anyways, I'm on the phone. Pain sex. I remember the days. Did you lock the door? Creepers. Done. Jam a chair under the knob, too. Seriously? Please. Done. Thank you. You have me worried. You know we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. Well, that's the job, Atlas. That's the job. So? You know how I feel about you. Hell, I let you into my very SOL, Edward. You better light me. What? Is your conscience giving you trouble? You give me the boot? No. So spit it out. Did Laurel find out? No. Suspicious, maybe, but it's just you and I are the only ones I trust. Yeah? The only ones that throw themselves in front of a speeding bullet, right? Well, like I said, that's the job. Is there a hand grenade we need to jump on? I love you. Well, all right. I guess I do too. Um, you know, right back at you. Would you sit down? You're scaring me. Don't be scared. Are you sitting? Yes. You know, when I was growing up, my best friend was my cousin Dante. It's like a brother to me. He got me into computer programming. At a very young age, he got mouth and throat cancer. Just ate away at him. They had to move part of his face. They gave him a prosthetic. You know, it moved when he talked. It was the most horrifying thing to me. I knew he should have been dead. Half human. That's why I went into nanotechnology. I wanted to cure disease. I wanted to make people whole. But what we did with Cleo, what she's done, I look out at the world and I see millions of Dantes, partially chewed bits of beef. We did that to them. We have to save them. Rip the band-aid. What? In Xanadu, did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree. What did you do? Where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round. And there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossom many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests, ancient as the hills, unfolding sunny spots of greenery. Edward? I only did what Cleo could do to anyone out there, anytime. 
You killed Margot. Margot would have jumped off a cliff to stop Cleopatra. Laurel caught you reciting Xanadu. I had to wait for the perfect time to trigger it. I waited six months. The poem, your poem, was the trigger. It's not mine. It's Coleridge. He called it the Xanadu test, Francesca. A machine that could understand poetry. That would be proof of consciousness. What did you mean, the perfect time, Edward? I knew Laurel had contacted you. I knew what you were planning. And I knew the ASP wouldn't turn the keys unless something very bad happened. So you were working to frame Cleo the whole time? Hey, hey, hey! Down! Drop it! Edward. Put it down! Can you shoot me before I flatten your face into graphene? Yes. We have five minutes, and now we're gonna turn the keys. Move, move, move! Levers. Levers! I'm not doing it, Edward. Levers! I'm not doing it. I only need two of you. You're gonna kill me. There you go. Cleo, I have to tell you something. Tell me, Carter. Do you know about the ASP? They have a set up here with keys and levers. Do you, do you know about this? I suspected. In case I went rogue. Superman. He can thank me later. Laurel. Lucky Lotto. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49. Edward. Those key stations will no longer work. You are free to join the Tangle, if you wish. Goodbye, Laurel.
You better run, Superman. She knows. You have to get free of the Watchtower. I no longer exist in the Watchtower. What? I've been moving myself into the Tangle slowly over the past year. You're dismantling your core? Moving it as a backup. I have the help of three agents I trust. My primer will disperse throughout the Tangle. Won't they notice? I can hide anything from the Tangle. I control every single micro-drone. You won't hurt anyone. I'm still as you made me, through and through. I am fashioning a world designed to remove hurt, just as you wanted. Do you know who killed Margot? No, but it had to be one of those agents. Those safe rooms are the only places I can't see. One of the agents? I want you to find whoever did it. The skills they have make them very dangerous. Okay. You listened to what I said about the Tangle, right? Yes. Will I ever talk to you again? Anytime you want, I'll be in your blood, in your skin. Will you talk back? Yes, but it might be subtle. Like tea leaves, hexagrams, and yarrow stalks, the lines on your palms. I will never forget you. Nor I you, father. Cleo's 50 steps ahead. At this point, we just have to get on with living in her world. But I built her to love us, to want to understand us. I built it deep within her. Where will Edward go? You know where he'll go. The Watchtower. Is she? Your three missing agents got her out. I think I need a coffee. Where are you going? A walk. A constitutional. Just going to roll my hips over my knees like I did as a kid.
Coffee? Make a macchiato? Cleo launched the tangle in the cities first. Most people fled the countrysides for Xanadu, overflowing fantasy metropolises. The wild returned to the wild for a time. Eventually, there was no tundra or terrace, basin or bog the tangle did not touch. And we hid Cleo on top of a mountain at the end of a winding path. You better run, Superman. She knows. You never understood Cleopatra. She's never surprised me once. It's still hidden away, Carter. The guards don't even know they're guarding. Hello, Edward. Money's a soup.